Hey, Professor Gilmatt here again uh, with a new video. And so today what we want to talk about is correlation coefficients, okay? And so um, what is a correlation coefficient? Like what is that? What does it do? So we use the letter R uh, to represent the correlation coefficient. And that's, that's not just because we ran out of letters when we're doing math. The letter R was chosen because the variables are regressed to standardize values. It basically, we make them unitless when you do something with the standard deviation, um, and that helps us to determine what R is. And so the correlation coefficient actually measures the amount of association between two quantitative variables, all right? And so um, <clears throat> how well they are associated, how strongly they are associated uh, is what R tells you. And so it actually tells you the direction of the relationship, uh, both positive and negative, and the strength, okay, from zero to one absolute value. We're gonna talk about it, all right? So if the association is positive, then both values increase, right? Um, and R is positive. Think about the slope of a line as we look at this particular um, graph right here. What you can see is as the um, nose black of a tiger increases, the age of the tiger also increases. So nose black is one of those things that we can use to help us predict a tiger's age. And as the nose black increases, the actual age of the tiger increases. So this was some data I got um, <clears throat> that's real. All right. Uh, again, if the association is negative, then as one variable increases, the other decreases. Or you might say they are inversely related. Um, and R is negative. And so again, you have the picture of a slope of a line. And so what this is, the um, labor participation rate, the overall labor participation rate, um, starting in about 1995 and going to 2015. And as you can see, as the year um, goes by, uh, the actual labor participation is going down. If I were to draw a line, it would be going down through here. Okay, so uh, this is the actual labor participation that we that we see. All right, and so um, if there's if there's really no association between the variables, then R is zero or pretty close to zero. Turns out that even things that are not really related are actually still going to have um, some association just mathematically. Um, but this really indicates that there's no association, there's zero association between the two variables. And one of the ones that I love is a, a survey that StatCrunch did where it asked what your current age was and what age you should start thinking about retiring. Um, and so I think people interpreted the question in different ways, like when should you start planning for retirement, like 30s, 40s? When should you actually you know, like quit your job right cash in your stocks retire you know 65 70 um, and then I guess there were people who felt like maybe when could you actually retire you personally and some people felt like they might be into their into their 80s before they were able to and so there's no association among this data between the age that a person is and the year the age that they think that they should retire or start retiring okay and so um, this would be this has an R value very close to zero. We'll love this data for that. Okay, the stronger the association, the closer the value is to one or negative one. Okay, so if I go back, this this is probably close to negative one. There's a fairly strong association. It's much stronger here. This little plateau kind of messes it up, but it's very strong along here. Um, this one has a very strong positive association. This one's going to be very close to positive one, as you can see the, the tiger nose black data. And so, <clears throat> um, you know, but, but what does it look like when it's not close, right? What, is it, what does point 0.5 look like? How can we develop an eye for how strong the correlation among the variables is? Well, StatCrunch actually has a great tool for helping you to develop this skill, and that's where I want to go uh, now. So here I am, and I'm going to actually go ahead and pull this up just a little bit so that you can see it. And StatCrunch has a series of applets in the upper left-hand corner. Um, and so if you click on applets, they actually have this thing called uh, correlation by eye. And this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to determine by eye what things look like. 
And unless you have some data that you want to play around with, you can just randomly generate some data. And I think this is a great way to get started. And so as I hit compute, what you'll get is a um, sample of 20 uh, data points. Um, and they're going to put them in here. Oops, I should get rid of that one. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to reset it. Uh, Sorry about that. I uh, I messed it up a little bit. Okay, so here we've got this data right here, and so what it wants you to do in the bottom is to try and guess the correlation within point one. So really, you only have about twenty options, right? Um, so you should be able to make a guess, check it, um, and then it'll give you a little hint. So I look at this one. I can see it's positive. I can see the data is fairly consistently close together and so maybe I think that this is about a 0.8 and I check it and it says oh look great you're within 0.1 right um, and so if you show it's actually 0 0.085 and I thought it was pretty close now watch this show down here right what if I take this this point down here and I start moving it up into the pattern it actually it actually gets a little worse so let me see where it gets better See, now they're starting to get a little better. Right? And so as I move these, now you can see it's almost 0.9. And I'm getting up here, and they're getting even closer. And now it's 0.92. Right? And as I move them around, now it's 0.93. Now it's 0.99. I basically have a line, 0.9906. Right, 0.9918, I put this one up here. This is getting, I mean, this is basically a line right here, right? And so, um, you know, that's that's great. So we're gonna simulate it again. And actually, I wanna simulate 20 points. Um, this looks terrible. Look at how spread out this is, right? And so um, I'm gonna guess that this probably has some sort of a positive correlation, but it's probably pretty weak. I'm gonna say 0.1. Right, it says actually try a slightly stronger one, so I'm going to say 0.2, and it was actually 0.28, so I got within 0.2. So you can see, even a 0.28, right, looks pretty bad. Okay, this is really, really spread out. If I start to pull this in a little bit, right, where you can really kind of see it's a positive association and it fits the pattern a little better, that's only 0.5 right there. So what I would recommend is just try simulating some of these seeing how um, close you can get uh, to it um, and so you know I got I got pretty good at eyeballing these as you go through and just simulating them you know this one looks really good this one looks like it's about 0 0.8 um, 0.9 right so 0.92 so you can see that one's really really strong so just keep simulating these this one is terrible um, looks like it's maybe slightly negative. <clears throat> oh, try a positive correlation. So maybe 0.1. There you go. So it's actually 0.15. So like I said, even uh, variables that aren't associated with each other at all still mathematically have probably have some small association. That's what you're seeing here uh, with this one. And so go ahead and play with that. All right. And I think you'll develop one. So uh, practice with this tool till you're comfortable with it um, and as soon as you get better at it that'll make you happy and me happy right so till next time